Hi guys, my name is Amber Kennedy. I'm a real estate student with Humber College. I'm the owner of Behind the Business. This is a small segment on YouTube where I interview small businesses and local businesses of, of Sarnia, Ontario. And today with me, I have Julie and Jillian. Can you guys tell me where you're from? Hi, I'm Julie and I own Belly Babe Maternity Boutique on 167 Mitten Street in Sarnia. Hi, I'm Jillian and I own Jillie Beans Creations. I'm located in Petrolia, but sell out of Julie's store on Mitten Street. Excellent. Welcome, guys. Thank you for being on my show today. Thank you Thanks for having us. So, we'll just jump right in. So my first question for you guys is what type of business do you run? So like the name states, I'm a maternity store, but I also carry non-maternity plus size clothing as well. Uh, I have a ton of clothing. I carry maternity nursing bras, underwear, support belts. I got a lot of stuff and all of Jillian's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I own Jillian's Trace, as I mentioned before, I make a lot of handmade baby items, um, blankets, bibs, tears. Um, I've also been making a lot of scrub caps and masks lately um, to service the need of our local um, essential workers. Um, I do custom orders as well as um, sell and jewelry store products that I've made up for individuals who pop into and looking for stuff. Excellent. That's awesome. So my next question for you guys is when and how did you start your business? So I got into the business in December of 2011. I used to have a business partner. Uh, she's long since gone. And that's how I got started. I've always worked retail. Uh, I worked uh, for a, another small company prior to that. And when it closed, I came over to Belly Babe. And uh, 10 years later, here I am. <laughs> uh, my passion started actually when I was um, I had on maternity leave with a five-month-old baby. Um, I was bored. I'm a teacher um, on my day-to-day -day job and I found that I was lacking the creative outlet. So um, with the push of a friend, uh, I opened up my own handmade business and just started creating on my free time uh, while my son slept or at nighttime while he went to bed. I would create and just got inspired and had fun with it. That's awesome. What a great story. I love that. I I also have a couple little ones, so I can definitely appreciate the downtime. Not so much now that I have two, but with my first one, there was a lot of downtime. I wish I would have done something with that. Now, Julie, you said 10 years. Isn't your anniversary coming up? It sure is. April 1st. Ah, uh, that's so exciting. So everybody, 10 year anniversary for Julie. Yes, and um, I've teamed up with some of my suppliers and we're gonna have some giveaways and some fun stuff starting the 1st of April and throughout the month of April. Excellent. So you guys kind of already answered this a little bit, but if you guys can go into a little bit more detail about what kind of products you guys offer. So maternity clothing, um, and I've started getting, being able to find, which has been a difficult task, is not her plus size maternity. So I carry from extra small, small up to 3X in a lot of products, but I'm still not finding it with every supplier. So I have to work hard to find that. And then I carry, I just started this fall carrying non-maternity plus size, and it starts at a 14 and goes up to a 24. Uh, it, it just, I did it, you know, last February, I started this process for the plus size and it just kind of coincided with Pennington's closing and it just gives me another level of merchandise in the store. Yeah. Well, yes, we have touched on it a bit before, but I do make um, handmade baby blankets, um, teethers, bibs, swaddle blankets, headbands, um, and I have been making a lot of scrub caps and uh, masks for uh, kids as well as our essential workers. Um, I also do um, car seat ponchos, which is one of my biggest uh, sellers. Uh, they don't want kids wearing coats in cars anymore with their car seats, so I make the ponchos. I've sold hundreds of them. So that's one of my big sellers. Julie can't keep them in stock. So 
one of my I big sellers. We also custom blankets. So being able to personalize the blankets for the baby or the individual um, are two big my sellers. What do you do for custom blankets? How does that work? Okay, so if a, an individual is looking for a specific, let's say, fabric, color, theme, um, I will do the research to try to find the fabric and give them options. Um, I'll send them pictures of uh, some options of what I can get, as well as the backing. I use um, two different types of fabric, usually for the backing of one of my custom blankets. There's a very soft minky, um, great for kids with sensory. Um, and they get to pick the color, the fabric, and I put it all together. And I also get their, their name can be, the child's name can be embroidered on the, the blanket as well. So I have um, another local business that I deal with that embroiders a name on the blankets. So they really get to customize it from the beginning to the end. I love that. That's a really nice idea. What is your favorite part about your job? And for Jillian, I know you have a couple jobs, so you can totally <laughs> mention both of your favorite parts. <laughs> uh, for me, it's the day-to-day -day operation of owning a business and finding suppliers and ordering and customers. I love my customers. I, <laughs> Jillian and I are, she shopped in my store. <laughs> you know, all these years later, we're, you know, we, contact on a personal level not just business and love meeting new people very very social uh, and you know I really enjoy the alone time that I <laughs> that's you know, I, there's just not any that I don't love other than jerky people <laughs> yeah <laughs> I get that one <laughs> Keyboard warriors that drive me insane. <laughs> well, as Amber mentioned, I am a teacher by day and uh, a small business owner by night. Um, uh, not that it's been like that much lately with everything that's going on in this, the world, but um, I love what I do. I um, I love being able to work with my students, um, seeing them develop and change, and being able to meet the needs of them. Um, when it comes to my business, I love the interaction with individuals. I love the creative outlet it gives me, um, being able to create different things and being inspired by items that people have ordered to create different items. Uh, it really permits me that give, give the artistic side um, and gives me that, um, I guess, desire to be able to create and do different um, I don't, people always ask me like, how do you have time to do it? Um, when you're passionate about something, you find the time. Um, and that's what Jelly Beans is. It permits me, and I love that. It gives me my alone time. It gives me my space. Um, I have a whole room dedicated to it. So it permits me just to kind of be in my zone and leave my day away from whatever the stresses are of the day to just kind of create. I get the sewing machine and I just go and it could be no scrub cap or as much as it could be a personalized blanket just permits me to give that creative outlet and i love it that is excellent you know what hearing that really strikes me that you're a young grade teacher what grade range do you teach i teach grade two three <laughs> that really makes sense you know what you just yeah. strike me as such like a creative person and such like a loving person that you put your love into your work and it's very apparent. Well, I love what I do. I, you know, we talk about, you know, all the stress is going on right now. I'm very glad to be back in the classroom. Although, yeah. you know, like virtual learning had its challenges. I can say that, you know, it worked, it did okay. It was okay. It wasn't the best. It's very stressful having my own two at home. But um, yeah, I love, you know, the kids just want to be kids then. It's nice to be back in the classroom where they can kind of, you know, socialize a little bit and have some fun and like being home by themselves. <laughs> so, yeah, I think everybody's kind of getting bored. <laughs> I'm glad to be back. Excellent. Well, we're definitely glad to have you back. I've seen hundreds of parents be so excited to ship their kids back off. I am very lucky. I have a three-year-old, so I haven't had to go with the back and forth but I am not envious of those who have. <laughs> I only so. have one left in school and she's actually doing the virtual learning. So she didn't yeah. go back. 
Are you finding yeah. that it's working well for you? Uh, yeah, she's 12. I don't have anything to do with it. <laughs> I feel like the older kids, like if I was probably 10 and up, I'd probably like virtual better. I think the young ones really need that sort of like in-person stimulation, but the older I ones agree. just kind of, you know, they kind of do for themselves. So it's kind of dependent on personality, right? Yes. Depends on their needs. Yeah. Totally. Her yeah. need was to stay home because she was being quite bullied. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's a really big problem in schools. Obviously, I really, really hope that they keep both options open for people and they actually let them choose. <laughs> That'd be excellent. Yeah, there's a lot of children in the older grades that don't do well in a classroom setting that the homeschooling does work. The virtual Absolutely. learning at home. Yeah. I, I think it'd be nice too because you'd be able to reduce the classroom sizes a little bit. So the ones that do still decide to go to the school, hopefully we'll be able to get a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> no? No, they, they did not reduce class sizes. What? They actually increased them. Oh my so, goodness. Yeah, I what? started this school year off with 14 and now I'm up to 21. So, yeah. so they, they closed classrooms. They closed classrooms because they needed teachers to teach virtually. So they closed the whole classroom and took those students and maxed out the rest of the classes. So as okay, much as that, that has been put out there in the media, that's not the reality of schools. <laughs> there isn't a class size that's 15. It's 20, 26, 28. Um, yeah, that's so unfortunate. I was so hoping that it'd be able to be a little bit like smaller. That's yeah, okay. it would be nice, but it's not the reality. That's okay. <laughs> it is what it is, right? We do it what is. we can do. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, <laughs> teachers like you, we really, really thank you, especially going through all of this. Like, seriously, I, I personally would not have the patience for that. <laughs> that is not my forte. But it's not I, been easy, but <laughs> we do what we gotta do. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> we'll go a little bit upswing. <laughs> so, my next question for you guys is: How can we, as a community, support you? The biggest thing is getting your our names out there, right? Uh, word of mouth is your biggest compliment. So telling people, hey, did you know when you see a pregnant girl, hey, did you know there's a maternity store on Mitten Street? And the prices aren't that crazy, contrary to what you might have heard. <laughs> 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 so word of mouth, seeing our posts, sharing, liking, just passing them on. That is the biggest thing that anybody can do. Word of mouth. Great reviews. If you have bought something and you love it, that's always very very helpful whether that's on my facebook page my instagram page or on google yeah exactly what julie said it's definitely word of mouth uh, my business over the last nine years has definitely grown and i could say it's mostly been because of word of mouth um as well as having um a set location with julie within julie julie's been the one that supported me the most so i've kept my product in her store um over the years and it's helped get my, my my name out there just with having people walk into her store and notice my product with Julie mentioning it or and then them going to the next person saying, hey, do you know that they're, you know, I bought this lovely blanket from this individual and, you know, go and check it out. And not only they check my product out, but checking Julie's out at the same time. So that's been a huge thing is having my product in Julie's store. So the reviews, the likes, the word of mouth are excellent, but also having a physical location for me has been a great thing. Um, and it permits me to say, you know, I can't get that, you know, I, right now I'm too busy to do a custom order, but I have a lot of stock at Julie's, head into Julie's, and not only do they discover my product, they get to discover Julie's at the same time. So it kind of, the two for one kind of thing. Yeah, and that's why I like having her in my store, because it's just another way to bring traffic. Absolutely. It's a really, really smart pairing. That's like super smart. <laughs> Is there anything else that you guys would like to tell us about your businesses? Um, you just check it out. Come in, check it out. It's I, I get very, very upset um, when the girls get chatting on the social media pages 
and somebody will ask about my store and then it's immediately, oh, don't shop there. It's too expensive. And then somebody else is like, no, it's not. Her prices are great and her use section is great. It just breaks my heart. So don't do that to me. <laughs> Jillian's been witness to a few things and uh, she sticks up for me when she finds them. And it's just people don't understand that, yep, you're hiding behind a keyboard. Nobody can see your face, but you're still hurting people's feelings. You're still causing pain. Um, yes, I'm a business owner. Maybe I should have a thicker skin, but this is my life. I have put 10 years of my heart and soul into this business, you know, foregoing family trips and doing different things because I don't want to close for a week because somebody might need something. You know, it's, it's difficult and people need to understand that if I was criticizing your family in the same way you're criticizing my business, it would hurt your feelings. And this is my my life. This is my family. I, I mean, I have kids and stuff, but <laughs> this is just everything for me. And people need to learn to be kinder on all levels. Absolutely. And what you said is so true. That's like, it's so easy for people to just sit there and say, you know, uh, your prices are high. Apparently, they've never seen maternity clothing pricing like ever <laughs> like, newsflash it tends to be more expensive <laughs> it's just like weddings the minute you put a wedding you put wedding before something the price goes up and it's not yeah. like i'm not overcharging that's just the price of things like i don't have a hundred percent markup i don't have a 300 percent markup like i know there's some stores in town that have 300 percent markups and people are clamoring to get there because it's not maternity and I guess the problem is people think, well, I only need it for such a short amount of time. I don't want to spend that much money on it. But if you invest in a good maternity wardrobe with your first, you'll have it through two, three pregnancies. And then I'll buy it back from you when you're done. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> That's awesome. Just to, uh, to, to um, grow on what Julie said, it's definitely like, you know, give us a chance um, my products are quality products. I try to source out as much local fabrics as I can, and it's not always cheap. People don't necessarily realize the cost of fabric. Um, and you know, I, I will say I used to get I do get a lot of, used to get a lot of my fabric stateside, which was cheaper. That's not possible right now. So certain things had have increased because, but at the same time, I'm supporting someone local. I'm ordering from local fabric stores. I'm supporting the local people. So yes, it's increased in price, but the quality is there and that's huge. Don't just shove it as my product aside because you know I charge maybe five dollars more than the other individual. But the quality of I make sure the quality is there and that's what's important to me. So if you know mine's five dollars more, make sure you realize it's because the quality is there. I'm not overcharging, I'm not trying to gain, I don't make a lot of money off of it. <laughs> To be honest, I don't, I don't have to scale. like fabric is expensive and a lot of people will say, well, I can make that cheaper. Go ahead and try. But <laughs> usually they'll turn around and say, yeah, no, we can do it. I definitely can't once they clue in. So you go ahead and try and I'll be honest with it. Like I'm trying to be honest as much as I can. I'll say like, you know, this costs this much and break it all down. So they realize that, you know, like I'm only making $10 of my time on your pro the product that I'm making for you. So really in a sense, it's just to give us like, to don't be negative, realize that the price is there because it's the quality that counts. And um, once you've purchased a product, you yeah, can guarantee you'll likely be back. <laughs> For mine, as it is. So it's Absolutely. just uh, taking that chance. And that's such an important thing to stress. Like I, as a consumer, I would so much rather spend the extra $5 to have something that's going to last and something that's a really good quality. And that's always been like how I operate. Like yeah. it's so much better to spend, you know what, $200 for something that's going to last you 10 years rather than $30 that's going to last you three months kind of. At that point, price doesn't really matter. Like you're paying for quality. And especially with you guys being local shops, like you're directly fueling our economy like that is our local area and especially jillian now that you're doing fabrics from local operators as well that's even more reason like five dollars is not a big deal at that point that is it's supporting a business who's also supporting another business so that's phenomenal you can't really put a price on that i think and then i guarantee my product you know like i, I do make mistakes 
noticing those snaps may not, you know, the snap might come off or, you know, I might have missed a scene when I was looking through it. I have no problem taking it back, fixing it and returning it. Like that's things happen, you know, so that I do have a guarantee on the product for daily, you know, use. Obviously, if it's been really scuffed up, roughed up, I'm not gonna, like, <laughs> yeah. it's a little bit different. It's not my fault, but um, <laughs> anything that's you know, normal wear and tear, and if it's come apart, or I, I can fix it. So that's great about yeah. being local is, you know, like if there is an issue, you can contact the actual individual. You're not calling a call center. You're not calling, you know, some random support person and you try to get your money back. I can actually yeah. physically fix it. So. And that's so much better because you'll know the product. You'll know exactly the seam. You'll be able to look over it again and be able to spot like, oh, like, there's what I missed. Duh. Like, you'll be able to be able you'll be able to fix it so much better and so much faster, right? And it's going to be so much more genuine. And like, I, I myself anyways, I'm a really, really firm believer of putting money directly into your economy. Like I would so much rather, you know, buy the local restaurant dinner rather than one of the fast food chains. And anywhere that I am able to, I like to support the local hair salons and even little things like that. Like they make such a big difference to us here, obviously. And there's so many different businesses to be able to look into. So I'm really, really glad to have you guys here, obviously. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Of course. So my next question for you guys, if you were given the opportunity to meet one celebrity, who would it be and why? I know. <laughs> um, <I'm not> sure. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a celebrity person. Yeah, that's it. I don't really well follow anybody or fawn over anybody. <laughs> Reese Witherspoon. That would be who it is. I love all of her shows. <laughs> That's right. She seems like a really, really nice person. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was like a hard question. I'm like, Julie, I don't really watch TV. I'm not really into <laughs> You know what? Me uh, <laughs> so. Oh, goodness. In my head, I'm big into like music and I guess like, you know, Garth Brooks always been something that I liked or um, um, I'd love to see uh, Garth Brooks play. Martina McBride, or like they're just a rest. Like, I'm big on music, I guess, more than um, actors. Well, that like, that celebrity, like, I think I'd probably be more a musician than an actor. Um, That's okay. And I can't believe like, Garth Brooks has always been one that I've, I've enjoyed. Um, I can't really think of anybody else. That's a hard question. <laughs> it is, I know. <laughs> I'm not. Who's your favorite Paw Patrol character? <laughs> my daughter's all about chase right now yeah, so it's chase, chase, chase. yeah. So, i love it <laughs> that's awesome it's kind of, it's kind of funny because my oldest is not a half and he watched it and then my middle has watched it and now my little one so it's oh, like that's awesome. it's multi-generational it's great yeah. <laughs> arthur was always my favorite arthur yeah <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen Arthur in a long time. Wow. Did you know he's an aardvark? Yes. I had no idea. I thought he was like a mouse or something. No, we have all the original <laughs> books too. Because my oldest okay. is almost 26, so. Okay, going back so you're familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so. old. That's okay. <laughs> I I like to say I'm an old spirit, so <laughs> I'm a young spirit. <laughs> so my first game for you guys is called a million dollar spot. And in this game, I'm going to give you two options and you have to pick the better option to receive the million dollars for. So whatever you guys think is the better of the two options, it'll give you a million dollars in my books. <laughs> so a million dollars, but you have to marry your childhood crush or a million dollars, but every time you see someone smiling, you can no longer control the volume of your voice and you begin yelling. I'd marry my childhood crush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to yell at customers? You don't think that's, no, that's good not business? So good. <laughs> it might deter them. Maybe if you preface it online. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I I have really good customer service, but I have a really loud voice. <laughs> it might work, but my volume control no so. longer works. Sorry, <laughs> but I'm <Yeah>. rich. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next game for you guys is called Super Fight. So with this game, I'm going to assign each of you a character and I'm going to give you an attribute. So the first step of this game is once I've given you those, between yourselves, you need to debate who of those people would win and you have to convince me why they would win. And then about partial way through, I'll throw in another attribute that may help or give you a disadvantage with your character. Are you guys ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Julie, you get Homer Simpson, but he has really small arms. And Jillian, you get a gorilla, but it's afraid of water. Who do you think will win? The gorilla. <laughs> no, you're supposed to have to do your <laughs> Okay, Homer will win. Because he's got a big belly and he can push the gorilla into the water. <laughs> and the gorilla's gonna win because he has big arms and he can squish Homer and move him out of the water. <laughs> Those are pretty big. <laughs> I just picture Homer Simpson and a gorilla belly bumping each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just having a fight. So now, Julie. Your yes. small armed Homer Simpson can control magnetism. And Jillian, your water petrified gorilla is armed with a sadness ray. Now what is my think, well, my Homer is what? He can control magnetism. So he has control over everything metal. Okay. So he can send metal shields to block the sadness ray. <laughs> and send them back to the gorilla so he gets so sad he can't function. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um, can use his sadness ray to control Homer's emotions and make he him get him for sure. He's got that metal shield, so he can't. <laughs> and make him sad, so he'll start to cry, and then he can't. And he loses all control of himself. <laughs> <laughs> I think the sadness ray is just... I think that's a good tool. <laughs> so, and I just picture when Homer gets sad, all the metal pieces just kind of start flying around because he's so out of control. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Like a metal. I think it would just damage both of you at that point. <laughs> Who do you think will win? The gorilla, of course. <laughs> Homer. Mm. Homer's I don't know. I like your thought with the shields. I think that's smart. Because then it does bounce back. That's right. He's protected. He can build himself a square box of metal and the gorilla can't get him. Even with the but tiny really <laughs> This is true. If only you had a water gun. <laughs> that is true. It would have been really, really hot in there. Hmm. But we can't control the weather. So. We can direct those metals to bring the sun rays and cause it to rain and then the grill is gonna cry because he's scared of water <laughs> <laughs> mm. i don't know i think i think with your being able to block with the metal i think you've got this one julie i think i think so. your homer wins <laughs> i have to agree <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i'm giving it to homer i gotta do it <laughs> Homer doesn't no. get much, so. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> Lots of events. <laughs> However, well, locked in that box, he's not going to have anything to eat. That's true. So, he can true. get he out. Be really... He can that's... put on. Yeah. And Homer <laughs> likes food. He can build himself a metal uh, and helmet. Here, like, he not just has a small that, slit I... so he can see out of it so the gorilla can't get him. Yeah. That metal is <laughs> just going to save his life. The gorilla's screwed. It's plain and simple. <laughs> I think I have to agree. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that concludes who the winner is. <laughs> so, 
I just want to thank you guys so much for coming on my segment and helping me grow my little series. I'm really, really excited to have you guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you.